Okay, it's time to get a bit nerdy and talk about a little experiment that we ran at Barista Hustle HQ recently. What we did was we had one coffee and we ground it out on a regular filter coffee grind setting from an EK43 and we used a Kruv sifter to separate these grinds into three different sizes. One of them was smaller than 250 microns now, a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter, so this is up to a quarter of a millimeter. The next was 250 to 500 microns, so from a quarter to half a millimeter in width. And lastly, was everything larger than 500 microns or half a millimeter. Now, we separated these out into cupping bowls and we placed uh, about five, I think it was five grams of each of these samples in four cupping bowls each. Uh, sorry, three cupping bowls each. And we then performed a very small cupping with boiling water and poured the water in, agitated the grinds, and then took a sample at 15 seconds for one bowl, at 30 seconds for another bowl, and then at 45 seconds for the last. Now the idea here was to see how quickly we're extracting the coffee and how much of the coffee we're extracting compared to each other. Now what we can see here is of course at zero seconds we have zero percent extraction. Now extremely quickly in 15 seconds we immediately jump up to in the case of the smallest grinds 22 and a half percent extraction yield. Crazy straight away we've almost got everything. Now we can see at 30 seconds we've only got a little bit more, maybe half a percent more, and then by 45 seconds we're almost horizontal in terms of our rate of change of extraction. So we're, uh, we're at maybe 24 and a bit percent. So almost all of the extraction, 90 percent of the extraction is occurring within the first 15 seconds for those smallest grinds. Now, if we look at the purple line, which is our second largest grinds, we're again rocketing up to 20% extraction and then gradually increasing after that. Now, interestingly, we don't reach the same maximum extraction as the smallest grinds. Now, this means that there is some coffee in the larger grinds, these closer to 500 micron grinds, some coffee in the middle of those grinds that is not being extracted. Now, if we go down to the largest samples, the 500 microns, we see there is that immediate rocket up to 14, 15% extraction. And then, of course, that gradual increase from then on, and then a plateau. And we can see that same shape, but we're not reaching anywhere near the same maximum extraction as the smallest grinds. And this of course tells us that there's even more coffee trapped inside those large grinds that doesn't see any extraction. And what this tells us again is that the outside of these coffee grinds are being extracted the most and the inside is being extracted the least. So it's safe to say that it's the outside of all of these coffee grinds that's contributing flavor. What this means is that we're not actually tasting something like 15, 16% extraction yield from these largest grinds. We've extracted them by mass to 15%, but we haven't extracted of the portion of the grind that we have extracted, we're not extracting to 16%. We're actually extracting around 23%. And then the inside of these large grinds is dragging down our average. So there's a lot of 0% in the middle and a, a little bit of 23% on the outside, and that gives us our average. So when we say we're not enjoying a high extraction, that's incorrect because almost everything that we're tasting and enjoying is a high extraction of the outside of these grinds. And what we're not tasting is the inside. And the average of the two is our total extraction yield.
So we took this experiment a little bit further and we dragged it out up to 10 minutes, 600 seconds, because this is what a normal cupping would be. And we see something interesting. Our smallest grinds, of course, rocket up to 24.5% and then stay relatively flat all the way up to 10 minutes. And this tells us we've already reached maximum extraction. We're not going to extract any more out of those grinds. Interestingly, the second size, the middle size, continues to increase. Now this means that the water has managed to go into those grinds and continue to extract and then diffuse back out again into the slurry. That's really positive because this is the usual grind size that we would be using for cupping. It's also, I believe, why many people say that cuppings taste a lot better than filter coffee because their extraction is continuing to get more even towards the end. Now down to our boulders, our largest grinds, Unfortunately, even with that extended period of time, we're still sitting below 20% extraction for those largest grinds. So no matter how hard we try, the water just isn't going to get inside the middle of these big grinds. Now this experiment made me wonder, how deep is the water getting into these different sized grinds? Now what we can do is we can do a quick little bit of math if we imagine that all of the grinds are spherical, and this is incorrect, but it's good enough for a guess like this. If we imagine that they're all spherical, we can do a little bit of math. Now, if this is our grind before it's extracted, and it's a big one, and this is our grind after extracted, we can see that there's a area in the middle of our spherical coffee grind that isn't extracted. Now, if we wanna figure out what percentage of that coffee grind isn't extracted, and then work that into a the volume of a sphere then we can calculate how much is left and that's the depth that we're extracting to you could also do it in reverse figure out how much we have extracted then figure out what kind of a depth of an uh, a shell of a sphere we have now this is for example a smaller coffee grind that has then been extracted completely and there's nothing left in the middle so we did some quick maths and we figured out that this outer shell at 30, 45, 240, and 600 seconds is a slightly different depth um, each time, but there's a pretty good average across all of these different samples. And it looks as though the maximum depth that the water is penetrating these grinds is 100 microns. So that's safe to say if our coffee grinds are 200 microns in diameter, then the water is able to penetrate, diffuse, extract, and get back out again. If our grind is any larger than 200 microns in diameter, then the water isn't going to penetrate and extract it, and then we're going to be left off with this scenario where some of the extraction hasn't completed no matter how long we brew the coffee for. So, Takeaways from this are when doing any immersion brew or cupping, grind finer than you think. On an EK43, have the dial facing vertical straight up and your cupping will improve. When brewing with filter, as always, if you grind too fine, then you're going to clog that percolation uh, from, from being able to drip through easily. So that's a fine balance. But with immersion brews, if you can handle the sediment, if you can um, wait for it to settle or filter it out effectively, then a finer grind method is going to be superior. You're not going to be over extracting the coffee because all of the coffee you're tasting is at a very high extraction anyway. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you want to extract all of your coffee more quickly, then of course you'll need a finer grind size. The finer the grind size, the sooner you can stop extracting which means that you can be faster at brewing coffee, but it also means that you don't need to push the coffee as hot or as uh, agitated as much or brew it as hot, which means that your chances of over extraction, which isn't a number here, it's more of a uh, certain set of chemicals that you extract if you punish the coffee too hard, it's less likely that you're going to over extract the coffee and get those bad flavors out. So if you can get everything you want in a short amount of time without hitting the coffee too hard for too long, 
then you're, you'll have a high extraction with a lower chance of over-extracted flavors appearing. So I hope that helps you uh, when deciding what kind of grind to use when brewing for immersion or sometimes even drip coffee.